Hello everyone, this is Deepak. Welcome to part 10 of this tutorial series on Java programming language. In our last tutorial, we learned about if statement. Let us recall what was if statement. If statement was a statement that used to check a condition and depending upon the evaluation of that condition to be true or false, we used to execute block of code. This was a conditional statement. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about switch statement. Switch statement is very similar to if statement in its use case and in most cases we could use if as well as switch for same. Now let's see an example. Let's say I want to take an input from user and that is a month number. If I take month number from the user I would like to tell him that that number belongs to quarter 1 or quarter 2 or quarter 3. So how would we proceed it using if statement? I would start with writing an if statement whose condition would be something like if month number is equal to 1 then the month belongs to quarter one. Now if month number is 1 then that month belongs to quarter 1 and same way we would proceed with other statements if else condition. So what we would do is we would say that if month number is num 1 then month belongs to quarter 1. If month number is equal to 2 then month again belongs to quarter two, quarter one, sorry. Now, you would like to write similar statements for all the months and if month doesn't match any of these, then we would like to say that the month is unknown. Let's execute this code. Let's say if I put month number as five, it tells, okay, you mean quarter two. Now this is the expected output. You would also understand that you could increase the readability of this code by combining multiple conditions. Since the output or code block belonging to first, second, and third condition is same, we could have written as if month number is 1 or month number is 2 or month number is equal to 3 and then we could have eliminated these two statements same way we could have done for quarter 2 3 and 4 another way is to use the range conditions if month number is greater than 1 and if month number is less than equal to 3 then the quarter is 1 Let's understand the execution of this one. Here you will see that we have made the code more readable and more concise by using this condition that if month is greater than or equal to 1 and month number is less than or equal to 3 then the quarter is quarter 1 else quarter 2, 3 and 4 respectively and if month number doesn't belong to any of these ranges then the month is unknown. Let's execute this program. Let's say month number is 11 then it prints out quarter 4 which is the expected output. Now let's understand how do we use switch in this use case. Switch is very similar statement. What we do in switch is we start with a switch keyword and then we have something called expression and then here we have some case statements and here we put the values. The value here belongs to the value of this expression and then here we have the block of code and then we have next case where we compare value 2 
and then we have again a block of code and so on let's see the formal definition of switch statement switch statement provides a way to select one of the many different actions so the switch statement starts with switch keyword and then an expression in the parenthesis this expression should be evaluated into an integer or a character or a string and then the block of switch starts with the braces and then we have multiple case statements each case statement starts with a case keyword and then a value this value is something which will be compared to the value of the expression during the evaluation of switch each case block has multiple switch statements and then we also have a default statement which gets executed when none of the case matches note that every case block is terminating with a break you must use a break statement after each case block this is extremely important let's see this syntax in action in our program the expression is essentially month number this month number evaluates to an integer so if the value of month number is 1 then I need to do something and that something is assign the month to quarter 1 and then as I said we need to write the break statement same way if the month is let's say 4 then the month belongs to quarter 2 and then we have a break statement same way we would write others and then finally we had a default one where we say that the month is unknown now let's understand the full use case here and then try to execute this code you will see that in this code what we have done is if case is 1 if month number is 1 then assign month to quarter 1 if case is 2 assign month to quarter 1 again same for 3 for 4 5 and 6 we are assigning month as quarter 2 for 7 8 and 9 we are assigning quarter 3 and for 10, 11, and 12, we are assigning quarter 4. Let's execute this program. And let's say your favorite number is 5. And we say the month belongs to quarter 2. This is how we write a switch statement. You would wonder that just like we optimize the readability and the condition evaluation of if, if statement, here also the case block of 1, 2, and 3 are very similar. And therefore this could be combined you are right we can do that but before getting into that let's understand one more thing if I remove break statements what would happen let's say I remove this break statements now this would be an interesting observation because when we remove this break statement you could guess what should be the overall behavior let's say I'm remo removing all the break statements and then someone is entering month number as 5 can you guess what should happen the switch statement will evaluate the value of month number as 5 and then it will match with 1 2 3 4 it won't match then it would evaluate case 5 because cases are evaluated in a sequence when it reaches this case 5 the condition would be evaluated to true and therefore the month should be quarter 2 right but let's see the output if I put 5 the output is unknown the reason of this output is as soon as case 5 matches month is assigned a value quarter 2 and after that switch doesn't find a break statement because switch doesn't find a break statement then in that scenario it just falls off 
to other cases. It doesn't check these conditions, but it will evaluate all these statements. And therefore, the last statement month is equal to unknown gets assigned, and therefore we get the output here. Therefore, break statements are compulsory. Although you can remove the break statement from the last case because anyways that last case or default case would be the last one therefore break might not be required there. However for sake of readability and no confusions being arised always use a break statement. Next you are also thinking about how do we optimize this. What if I want to merge this case 1, case 2, case 3 blocks. Yes I can do that. I can say that case 1 or case 2 or case 3 use this block same way for case 4 case 5 case 6 use this block so for case, case 7 case 8 use the, this block and then for case 10 11 and 12 use other block so the way it gets evaluated is the month number matches case 1 since case 1 matches, it will find the next block that is to be executed. It will fall off to case 3's block and then this will get executed. On break command, this will just get out of this switch statement. Let's execute it and show you. We, we gave the month, let's say 7. It gave the quarter 3, which is the expected output. So what did we learn? We learned that the use of break statement after each case block is necessary because we want to prevent the execution from failing through from falling through the remaining test cases let's take one more example let's say i have a variable called index which is assigned the value of marks averaged out on 10 basis now if we switch on this index we would like to say that if the student has got 10, 9 or 8 index, then he should be treated as honors student. If he has got 7 and 6, he should be treated as first division student. If it is 5, he is second division. If he is 4, he is third division. Less than that, he should be treated as failed. Thus, we saw that how multiple cases that want to have the same action can be stacked together in a switch statement. Now let's recall and revise all the switch statement rules. We saw that a switch statement can have multiple case labels but only single default label. Default label gets executed when no matching value is found. Let's see this in action. If I give a number, let's say 15 then the output is you mean unknown that means the default block gets executed when none of the case matches we need to use break statement to exit the switch case without break we saw that it will just fall through next important thing to understand is that the expression within the switch statement needs to evaluate to an integer or a enumeration or an enum or a string. Now let's say that I am having a string as uh, let's say 2 and I convert this switch to month and then I just make it compare it with its strings. Now this is the expectation that I want to do I want to compare the strings that if string is 4, 5 and 6 then do something case 7, case 8, case 9, case 10, case 11 and case 12. So what I am trying to do is that if month is having a value 1 then assign quarter 1 to it and so on but you will see that Eclipse is trying to show me an error let's see what is the error it says that 
cannot switch on a value of type string on source level below C1.7. Only convertible int values or enumeration values are permitted. What does this mean? Let me tell you a brief history about Java. Prior to Java 7, switch statement could take only integers and enumerations. But post Java 7, even strings are allowed. So you can go to project, you can right click, go to properties, you can go to compiler and you will see that the compiler level is set as 6. We can set the compiler level as JDK 8 and we can click on apply. It will ask to build, build the project now. We can click yes and then we can click ok. You will see that that error is just gone. So prior to Java 7, switch control expressions could be integer and characters only but now string objects are also allowed. There are more switch statement rules. Case statements are executed in sequential order. We observed this that when we removed the break statement, all the blocks were executed one by one. Finally, let's understand that when we should use if statement versus switch statement. I would suggest you to use if statement whenever your test expressions are something like ranges. If your month number is greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 3, this is a range check. And for such checks, if statements are more suitable. For other cases where you want to exactly match a condition to an integer or an enumeration, enums we are going to learn in later chapters. But even in case of comparing the enums or string object literals, we should use switch statement. So in this tutorial, we learned about switch statement and its details. You can also try some switch statements I would recommend you to write a program in Java to take a month number and try to find out the number of days in it. You would like to keep the number as 1 to 12. If, if the number is 1, then the number of days is say 31. And if it is 2, the number of days will be calculated based on the uh, leap yearness etc. You can take two inputs one month and one year. Depending upon these two you could define or find out the number of days in that month using the switch statement. This could be a good exercise for your testing the switch statement logic. So stay tuned we will cover more in our coming tutorials. Goodbye.